So how is the Lord about to reveal his love in a unique and beautiful way to this generation? Well, Sean Bolt shares some prophetic visions and insights that will help prepare us for this next move of God. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You enjoy our content and click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So how is God preparing his church for the coming revival? And why is he specifically raising up men and women who will walk in the same anointings that Solomon, Esther, Joseph, and Daniel did? Well, today's special guest is here to answer these questions and share how the Lord is challenging our perspective in this season. Join me around the table is my daughter, Rachel Ann Brown. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. We love prophetic voices, don't we? Yes, and especially ones that are friends. <laughs> and this one is someone who is a personal friend of our family, and we've seen yes. how God has moved in and through him and spoken to him um, personally yeah. through stuff he said to us. So I know that um, what he's going to share today is really going to bless our viewers. Yes. Cindy Murdoch, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. You're pretty in pink today. Well, thank you. I love that. You're just like <laughs> a little you. shining star over there. <laughs> thank you. Cindy Murdoch and Cindy Johnston. Yes. My yes. two Cindys. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. Rebecca Weiss, how are you? I'm good. And how is our new baby doing over here? Doing so good. Oh, okay. Anna Kendall, how are you doing? Oh, just wonderful, Joni. How are you doing? We're just growing around the table I'm every day, you, aren't we? I'm literally <laughs> growing. <laughs> Well, he, he is a well-known <laughs> prophetic voice minister, TV host, and author. He's our dear friend, and today we're excited to have him back at the table to share about his new book, Encounter. Please welcome our dear friend, Sean Bowles. Hello. Hello. Hey. 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 I'm so outnumbered. Oh, I, love it. <laughs> I know, like, pretty outnumbered. <laughs> yeah. no, but you can handle it. I can handle it. The this table's is good. gotten bigger <laughs> since you were here. The table has yes, gotten bigger. Yes, it has. I love this sound. Well, you know, in Isaiah 55, 8, the Lord declares, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. The beautiful thing is that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God will actually reveal some of his thoughts to you, mm -hmm. and learning how to access the mind of Christ is going to be one of the major catalysts of this upcoming Revival. Before we get into your book, Encounter, you um, had something happen on the mm -hmm. morning that Marcus Lamb went to be with the Lord, mm -hmm. and it really helped us, encouraged us, and blessed us. Would you share that? Yeah, I, I had had Rose, the producer of this show, she had contacted me just for prayer, tell me yeah. what, where things were at. And I just, I, I've told it before, but I was in just so much full faith with the Lamb family and just mm -hmm. all of Daystar and the whole world was praying, you know, we're just believing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't expect to have an encounter because I was just standing in faith, but hoping for anything from God. Right. And at 2 a.m., I woke up to a flash of light. I live in L.A., so we don't get lightning very often. It's very rare. And it was a bright flash, and it lasted a second, almost like a, a lingering light. And then it went away, and then I heard coyotes screaming outside like they were attacking somebody. So I was kind of just stunned because there was a natural thing happening. And so I was just trying to figure out what was going on. My dogs were barking. My wife was waking up, and I was like, wait, there's a spiritual thing that just happened. There's no rain. Mm -hmm. And I immediately, we had gone to bed praying for Marcus, so I immediately was like, this is about Marcus. And then I could feel the Lord. Either he had just gone to be with the Lord or he had been healed. But I couldn't imagine. I don't know why the thought he just went to be with the Lord would even come into my brain because mm -hmm. that wasn't part of my faith. It wasn't even part yeah, of what right, I would right. believe for. And so I had this sense of just praying for your family and just praying for Marcus and just, wow, something just happened. Like you, some something huge in this moment happened. There was a, a, the light represents obviously like God's assignment over the earth, not just over Marcus, like something was happening and shifting something forward. And so the next morning I was able to contact Rose and we talked for a second and about the fact that I said, was he healed or did did he go to be with Jesus? Here's the encounter I had. And she said at 4 a.m., and mm -hmm. I'd said the encounter at 2 a.m., it would have been mm -hmm. 2 a.m. my time, mm -hmm. he went to be with Jesus. And I was just, I, it took me about an hour. I was just stunned. I couldn't get over that. Right. And then I started to think about the encounter, like what does this mean, God? And I really felt like it meant it was a graduation that Marcus is going to do more there than he would have done here, and he did a lot here. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do more there. And it just was one of those moments where I thought, wow, that a lot is happening in the spirit realm right now for 
the future move of God, mm -hmm. and also, of course, your family, and then, of course, Daystar, but there's something that represented him going home as a general, and then being a general on that side of eternity, it was mm -hmm. just really impactful. I know the Lord kind of gave you an encouraging word for me, the family, and Daystar. Would you share that, and then let's get into your book. So... I feel like, let me say this because I have something new too in that because okay. I, I want to say this for your family specifically that goes into Daystar. I felt like some of what Marcus did was like a battering ram or opened up in the spirit realm. He opened up so much with you, Joni. You guys pioneered something in this movement of Daystar. And I really, really felt like now it's 2.0, it's the next level of programming is going to come. There's so much creativity that's going to hit you. Yes, yes. And I saw not just a stream, but like a river of creativity coming mm -hmm. from heaven, hitting Daystar and showing you guys not just how to take it into the infrastructure, but how to take the message and make it even more creative. Mm -hmm. And I saw not just uh, interview programming and, and uh, different types of shows where there's teaching, but I also saw creative programming and some reality aspects. And there's almost a reality aspect to how you carry this with your whole family anyways mm -hmm. as the Lamb family. Mm -hmm. But there's another level of that. And I felt like with the kids that the three of you are gonna get some anointed ideas on mm -hmm. programming that it wouldn't have been time for before and it didn't make sense for before. Mm -hmm. But I felt like the Lord is saying the programming now is what he's working on and the actual shows. Awesome. And there's and he's get, gonna give you room to grow in this mm -hmm. to where it's not high risk to try some new things. But I saw amazing programming coming in. I felt like Marcus was up in heaven, like, and I'm, I'm just saying this figuratively. I didn't see this, but I just feel like he's smiling down at like, he set a stage for this to be able to happen. So now it's time for the players to be on the stage to actually go forward with Joni, you know, mm -hmm. you being the president now of Daystar, just this whole thing. I feel like it's really significant. So I know I had a different word, but I really feel like the Lord is speaking into you know, the next 20 years of programming right now. Mm -hmm. And that this thing, like a lot of times when founders, when a founding person passes on or moves on, there's a decrease in energy, but there's gonna be a double energy and then more. There's gonna be a multiplication. And I love that mm -hmm. we're filming this. I know we're not supposed to timestamp it, but on, you know, 2-22-2002, and I think that's significant that I got to come yes. on this day and, and speak into the family and speak into the Daystar because there's, a key of David, Isaiah 22, 22, is being given to you guys mm -hmm. to be able to open something up that hasn't been opened in our generation before. Mm -hmm. It's something, and also it's closing something and how you've been standing against mm -hmm. tyranny and standing against, you're closing a door that needed to be closed That and you guys have a key to do it. And it's mm -hmm. obvious because like some of the things that have happened behind the scenes mm -hmm. that Marcus stood for and you have stood for as a family. And I just feel like that key is more at play now than ever before. Mm -hmm. And I'm really encouraged amazing. for you guys. Yes, oh, that's amazing. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, uh, your book encounter, um, it's interesting because you've been working on another book and then the publisher says, we think you need to share about your supernatural encounters. And yeah. it, it, when you first heard that, you're like, but wait, I know when you've got a strategy and a plan and then it changes, it shifts, <laughs> it's kind of hard to adjust, but the Lord really confirmed that this book was from him and the timing was now. And how do you do that? Well, they had asked me to take like a month to just pray about it. And I, I mean, these are vulnerable encounters. When you have an encounter with God, mm -hmm. you don't want to share it. You don't, it almost feels it's like it's personal. too exposed. It's easy to share a teaching or a testimony. Sure. But when it's how God formed the way you think about him, it's mm -hmm. almost like an internal process. It's like sharing, you could do a marriage seminar and share some of the things about your marriage, but when you actually go into, here's how we communicate intimate-wise and mm -hmm. how we get over fights and how we, you know, whatever. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to share all those nuts and bolts unless yeah. that's your whole thing, right? right? And so I didn't think I could even pull it together to share a bunch of encounters that overlapped. And then yeah. I wrote it, you guys, in two weeks. You and wrote I this book in two weeks? <laughs> It was about 10 to 12 hours. It was very fast. Oh. Sheree would watch me type, and I really? typed like 70 words a minute writing this book. Would the it was Holy crazy. Spirit remind you different? He just literally, well, the encounters were so alive in me. They, they, it's what I prophesy, pray, and teach out of all the time. Mm -hmm. But to time together, they never fully overlap before to create a perspective. Mm -hmm. So to be able to see how they wove together was totally, I just, I've never oh, had an experience, except for that. one of the book, Keys of His Economy, I wrote very similarly. I went and wrote it in two days. And this one took more because I have kids and a wife and all yeah. kinds of responsibilities. <laughs> At the time, I well, didn't you know, have all that. You talk about in the book that how that um, when when a life is fully surrendered to the Lord, how the mind of God will almost like rest upon your brain, That's what it felt. like little connections. I know for me, when when God speaks to me clearly about something, it feels like that. It's like I wouldn't even be thinking it, and all of a sudden yeah. He's giving me, right. you mm -hmm. know, wisdom or, or what to do for the day or whatever. I'm like, wow, they didn't, you know, I didn't even know that, Lord, but. Um, Let's talk about uh, some of the encounters. You start out with the, the Solomon encounter. 
and talk about how that plays into everyday life in the in the world we're living in right yeah, now. In Sunday school, we've all, you know, if you were in Sunday school, you you hear Solomon asks for wisdom and the Lord, you know, it's just this yeah. cute yeah. theme yeah. of like, yeah. and then there was a wise man and could build a kingdom. But once you're old enough, you go, it can't just be wisdom because I've been around some of the wisest people in our generation. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago when I had this encounter where I saw this, I was over a valley and I was watching like time lapse, a city being built over a number mm -hmm. of years. Right. And I was watching infrastructure being laid out and even agriculture and seeing the school system and the transportation systems. And it was all ancient, but it was very brilliant. It was so beautiful. And then I saw the temple go up and I knew I'm seeing in the spirit. And I don't know if it was literal or natural how it was or if it was just the way that God related to me, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing a picture of Solomon laying out the temple. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of this whole area, right outside of his palace, there was a, a place, a building where they were coming up with the schematics and the plans and everything. And he was just brilliantly thinking through, but not just with wisdom, but there was a word that I didn't learn until later, the Shema, which means that he asked God in that time and he said, God, I want your wisdom. He was actually saying, I want to perceive the way you perceive. If I was going to lead your people, not just knowing a book yes. or right, being able to make a book report, but actually I have the way that you think these mm -hmm. things through, processing through my brain. I want your processor. Mm -hmm. I want to process okay. with you. Wow. And so I'm seeing this and it changed me forever because I realized like many times when we think about God, we think with our own natural wisdom and we think like God's just going to upgrade us a little bit or he's going to give us a little bit of a, a boost but when I've been in my most brilliant moments of ma making the best decisions like about my wife or about our kids or whatever, I, it's like I don't just have a little added bonus. I actually think differently. Yeah. Like God has actually yeah. expanded my perceptions beyond what I would think. Like I, he's given me his gift of thought. I think that's so good because our perspective is only linear. When God's yeah. perspective, he can see everything. So I pray good. that prayer exactly. all the time. Lord. Give me a heavenly perspective because yes, yes. I know I can only see things one way. How do you see yeah. this situation? How important is that we pray that prayer, that we have the mind of Christ through what we think and what we see? And in the New Testament, we have that. We, we yes. see that over and over, the mind of Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2 that the perceptions and the thoughts of Christ mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit searches the deep parts of God and relates it yes. to our spirit. We have that, but Christianity doesn't practice the expectation of that. Mm -hmm. And we need to practice the expectation of that because that's what actually changes culture. Mm -hmm. And it actually helps us to build right financially. It helps us to build right with our family because he has original thoughts. And these things aren't to control us, but they're to enhance us and to bring us back into his original plans. How can... How can you describe that in a practical way or in a level that we all understand, like you were saying, God is releasing his mind into this generation? Well, you have, I love that because you have this God who somehow doesn't fit into the time and space he created, but lives in us, right? We're his mm -hmm. temple. So it means that we share the same headspace with God. So when we're praying about something, we could actually ask God questions versus just you know, shotgun prayers up, Lord, would you, yeah. would you, would you, but actually say, well, what do you think about this, God? And just wait. And like he may not situation. show you exactly mm -hmm. in that moment, but you're opening yourself up to the teaching here on Sunday morning might actually mm -hmm. address the very concern. Or you're in a conversation and somebody speaks it, or you're listening to the right worship song and all of a sudden your spirit gets really open and you go, there it is. And you have those aha moments. But there's something about practicing listening and just listening it's with true. intention. And I think that that's a lost art in our current culture of Christianity. Listening with intention. Tell Huge. us about your vision of the oak tree. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> there's there's a great maturing happening. I'm going to kind of go, go that route. There's a great maturing happening in Christianity right now. The mature are getting more mature and getting more wise and more seasoned and realizing like we can't be passive. Mm -hmm. And it's happening all over the earth right now. We're seeing it in America happen. We're seeing a big changing of the guard. A lot of people have actually passed on and gone yeah. home. But there's also a lot of pastors who are going to retire or turn over their ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said this in an earlier show that 85% of pastors who are in sta station in their, in their job right now in America were saved during the Jesus People movement. Mm -hmm. So there's a big passing on of wisdom and strategy mm -hmm. and intention and these things. And what I saw is that God is raising up people. And this goes back to a word Bob Jones gave me. I know some of your viewers would know who Bob Jones is. He said, you're going to, you're going to, I was moving to LA and he didn't like LA at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, there's an unrighteous root system there and God's right. going to break it up. And when he breaks it up, he's going to plant people like you to be oaks of righteousness there. Amen. And he's yes. going to plant people, Christians in society to be oaks mm -hmm. of righteousness. And you'll know it's true because in that time, you'll be able to get a miraculous house for your first time. And it's mm -hmm. hard to buy a house in LA. Oh, yeah. I'm a starter home. You have to have $200,000 because it's a million dollars. You know, it's like, yeah. it's not easy. 
And so most of our church members don't have or didn't have houses at the time. We didn't have a house. I, I'd been saving forever and I wasn't even close to, you know, half of what I needed. And so, you know, I just was waiting on that word, believing for a miraculous house. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. there was one year where all of our people in one year, including me, 27 people got houses. Wow. And, and miraculously, you. miraculous down payments, all these things. And we knew that the Lord was saying he's seeding the oaks of righteousness in mm-hmm. the land. Now, now, further into that, um, we ended up moving from that house. That was our starter home, which mm-hmm. was a miraculous starter home, into another house. And it has 22 protected oak trees on it that we live in now. Wow. And this theme in the Bible, if you think yeah, about it, so almost yes. every, yeah, I love it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> almost every nation um, that's in Western world, their, their national tree is an oak tree mm-hmm. because it represents strength. And in the Bible, it mm-hmm. talks about oaks about 20 times. Yeah. It represents strength. It represents resolve. It represents steadfastness. And in the season we're in, we're in a Hebrews uh, 12 season where everything mm-hmm. that can be shaken is shaken. Mm-hmm. But those oak trees don't shake. The deep root system. The deep root system and by the river of God, which represents communion and connection with God. So we have yeah. these symbolic languages, but we got to bring it into real life. Right. Like, am I connected to God right now? If I'm not, what can I do to mm-hmm. empower that connection? Not if, it, if church isn't enough anymore. We have the internet. We have Daystar. We have all yes. these ways to get involved where you still stay faithful at church. But, but all these other ways to fire and fuel you. Yes. If worship isn't meeting you right now, maybe God's moved on. Not that worship is, is ever passe, mm-hmm. but maybe he's moving you into something where it's like, you're supposed to be looking at visual art right now. You're supposed, or you're to, supposed be to be shine. doing something else. You're supposed to, so that you can get filled, yes. so that you can actually look at the world through my the lens of my love, my eyes and my perceptions and see something happen that you've never seen and that the world's never seen before. You know, and you were mentioning about the transference that you and Darius have pastored how long? Uh, 37 years. 37 wow. years. And, and the transfer is going now to your son. Yes. But it's not for them to retire. Because mm-hmm. now they're going to take all their years that and experience and help ministers that are struggling. Oh, so good. Right. And we're so excited about it. Um, statistically, like I believe it was last year, there were 20,000 pastors that resigned. Yes. They just could not mm-hmm. take the pressure, and many times they have no one to talk to. And there's so many pastors falling all the time, too, yeah. that need to be restored. Well, and even the ones who aren't needing to be restored, a lot of times they're so busy with all kinds of work that takes a lot of human effort. Mm-hmm. And they had their God assignment in the first four or five years, and they're looking yes. back going, where do I find that God assignment yes. again versus yes. the human assignment now that yeah. I'm relegated to because yeah. of mm-hmm. just the responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things you talk about in the book that I loved, um, we talked about it earlier, it was so good, is you had a vision of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sitting around a table mm-hmm. with, with with millions of strings mm-hmm. attached to the Father's wow. heart. Mm-hmm. And tell about what the Father would do. He would pick up one string, and the yeah. string that represented... Jesus would pick up the string. Jesus. So Jesus would pick up, like, at the end of the string, there's like a kind of like a, almost like a statue, like a light statue of the yeah. person. And he would look at it, and I was watching them look at it and speak into it, the Holy Spirit, wow. the Father, and Jesus. They're going to be this. They're going to do this. Before they're going to they have this. Conceived. Before they were even... Yeah. This wow. is before time began. They're mm-hmm. dreaming okay. together over humanity. Wow. Yes. And I'm Don't watching this that? picture, <laughs> looking at it, and being really shaped by it because of, even for me as a person who prophesies or prays for people a lot, mm-hmm. and a lot of times I'll have business leaders or political leaders or whatever call me, and sometimes it's, we go to the red light district, we're the poor, it's, it's mm-hmm. anywhere, and you see this person in front of you, and I go back to, what did you dream of before time began? Mm-hmm. When you were together, because it felt like each mm-hmm. person was thousands of years or a million years, it felt like so much time because it was like time lapsed. And I would hear a message again of his time lapse. And what was what was most grievous is that a lot of the people that he put all this investment into, I saw them in the fall, meaning that they were mm-hmm. like there was one woman who was in Africa who I, I from what they talked about before time began, she was gonna be this massive leader, community driven, be an inspirer of people, be like really know how to inspire people to action. But when I saw her, she was like in a village in Africa. And I was like, so far from what God had dreamed of when time began. Oh, wow. And I was like, and I was like sad in the midst of this incredible vision going, but what about that? And they said, think of eternity, not just now. Mm-hmm. And look at what she's doing with what I put inside of her now because she was a Christian woman and I was watching her and her community on a very small level in my mind, but a very pleasing level to the Father's heart that even yeah. in the midst of That's that, so she good. was still walking out the redemptive yes. value of who she was. And so, but it taught me how to see, this is 14 years ago I had this vision, so when I look at people, I'm looking at them the way he dreamed of us, his original intention. You know, Jesus stood first in the original intention of God as a man. And I'm seeing people like, 
what did you dream of, not just for them to do, mm -hmm. the works they would do, that's part of it, not just the resources they would have, but who are they? Mm -hmm. And he put such a solid identity in each person. They all look so different that I was, I'm still, like when I think of it, I get almost sentimental because I'm like, there's, mm -hmm. we're all so unique. And he Very thought nice. of each one of us with that. And I know for me, I was like, you know, laying on my wife's belly just when my she was pregnant and just like dreaming of my girls and all that Aww. they would need to become the, their yes, fullness yes. but i'm watching god do that in the same way as a father mm -hmm. as the trinity yes. over us you know one of the uh things you talk about is that I, i've never really thought about it as one of the greatest battles in the bible but it, you know because you think about you know jesus in the garden you know, let this cup pass from it. Or you think about the day he was crucified, or you think about what he went through, the whipping post, and you think about all, I mean, those are, but really you talk about that, the battle of him, you know, on the temple when Lucifer offered him the world, that really was one of the biggest battles that he had to fight, wasn't it? Well, it's one of our biggest battles too, because you picture Jesus is on the temple, Satan says you can have, he's already on the temple, so he's in the place of God. I'm not taking that away from you, you already have that but I'll give you all of this. And he's seeing it into the future. So he's seeing entertainment, he's seeing business, he's yeah. seeing politics, mm -hmm. and you can run it however you want, just, just disenfranchise from God. You know, just disconnect, And but you can have it all now instead of paying the price that your father's asking you to pay. And there's this place inside of us that Jesus had to go through that because we have to go through that. And so Jesus had to stand there because we look at certain things and we, because of our own corruption as humans, we fast track. We say, yes. I'm, not, I'm gonna bypass all that process because it takes too much. A lot of people might be midway through the process who are watching right now, and you're like, it's not worth it. But when you look back at him and you say, I've surrendered to you, you're worth any process, and I want your result, not my result. Mm -hmm. I don't want my gifts result. I don't want my talents result. I don't want my educational result. I don't want my relational result. I want your result for my life. And when you've been led enough by God, and he, he gives us baby steps, you start to, you, you'll say yes to really hard situations, just like Jesus said yes to the Father and no to Satan in that moment, though it was one of his greatest temptations, one of the greatest battles, because he could have solved it all in a second. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, he could have sol solved it all in his own nature anyways. Yes. Yeah. But he chose to do it through the Father and the Holy He's Spirit. Surrender. And so there was that place of surrender that I feel like is foreign to our generation because we want we don't want the God process. We just mm -hmm. want the God result. Mm -hmm. And God's oh, process is he leads us mm -hmm. around so many corners through so many careers that's or true. relationships or things that we're doing that we would have never picked in our own imagination. So true. Right. And when you're being led by God, you know it because it's like finances. One of the first ways we learn how to hear from God is God says, give to that mission mm -hmm. strip or give to those people or help that. And you don't want, there's a grief in it. You're like, I don't want to give away my money or my energy or my mm -hmm. time or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a volunteer children's ministry. I don't want to do this. And you know it's God because you're like, I don't yes. want to do this. <laughs> and then you get a result because of it, yeah. because you surrendered. That was, yeah. you know, people get the same way with conviction of sin. It's like, no one wants to stop sinning. You know, if, you, if there's something that, it, it, like, it takes the voice of God to say, hey, no, if it's extreme stuff that can kill you, yes. But if it's like, I like gossiping, I like to be in the know, I like to know what's going on. Right. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's like, that's not my nature for you. Right. That's not who you are. I like exaggerating. I like this part of my personality. I like the, the, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's not yeah. what I've chosen for you. And so when you, you know it's God when he begins to lead you mm -hmm. from the inside out and change your nature. And we don't like that surrender, but Jesus mm -hmm. had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so when we see that, we look at it and go, okay, That's you it. went through yeah. the God process and got the God result. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. You talked about, uh, was it the, the man uh, that was uh, that as acquaintance, business partner or something that was going to get married to another man? Kind of share that. Oh, yeah. So this is just a moderate story. It's not in the book, but um, just one of our team that we have, he was about to get married to another man. And he, and he was in a church and he was a worship leader in a church. And it was a church that accepts, you know, that lifestyle. But um, he was praying and he saw a vision of a wife and two kids for himself mm -hmm. that oh God goodness. had for him. Wow. And when he saw that, he realized like, when I said I surrender all to you, Jesus, it even means my sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I've never, he had theology pro-homosexuality at this point and his church believed it, everybody believed it. And so he left his groom to be at the altar, left the church because he felt like there was something different for him yeah. and went on the spiritual journey. It took about three years to unwind, mm -hmm. and, you know, that old. Yes and believe for the new. And when he stood in the vision though of what he saw, he saw what God had prepared for him before time began, a wife and kids. And he, he, he just loved them before he even knew them. So he had to, he had to go on that journey. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a, you know, I think a lot of people are going to have these encounters yeah. that changed them before. Yeah, they exactly. know how to be, you know, make choices that are good choices. Mm -hmm. They're just following God. And you know, that's why I wanted you to share that because there's someone watching right now. You've actually had a, 
a vision and an encounter, you didn't understand it. Like you didn't understand it at all. Mm -hmm. And God was actually trying to show you his will for your life. Mm -hmm. And because he looked at your heart. And even though there are so many voices around you and so many uh, things that you have thought were truth, but really weren't truth. Mm -hmm. And the thing about God, I mean, he is love and he is truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not just love and he's not just truth. I mean, right. but when you put those two together, love and truth, and you see that on the other side of being obedient to what he's showing you to do is your greatest life. Yes. Um, yeah. and, yes. and that's what he's saying to you. Some of you are saying, well, I'm about to make some decisions and God is going to give you an encounter. And I don't mm -hmm. know, it's a dream, a vision, or someone that's going to come across your path and say, you know what, the Lord is has spoken to me to share this with you. But whenever it happens, you're going to recognize it and you're going to say, oh, snap, this is <laughs> this is what they were talking about on that table. Oh, Thank snap. God. Yes. Oh, that was snap. talking oh, about. <laughs> so just take a moment. We're out of time, but just encourage okay. that person that's watching right now. Yeah, I want to encourage you. In your spirit right now, God is doing things. And it, maybe the person doesn't really know God. You may not feel like you have a connection to Jesus. Or you may really know him and you're in the season of like, God, I surrender everything again. I need more of you. I need your God result. God wants to bring you an encounter. He never just brings one. He keeps encountering us over and over through our lifetime mm -hmm. so we can know him intimately. And I want to encourage you to pick up a Bible again. Mm -hmm. Ask him for a hunger for the Bible. Ask him mm -hmm. where to read the Bible, where to start. Mm -hmm. And let him lead you on a journey biblically. And there's some great Bible studies as well. But I'm going to pray over you. Holy Spirit, would you open our eyes yes. to see you, your heart for us right now and your heart for the world around us. And God, everything that we're going through, everything that is hard right now, you have answers for, you have process for, you have compassion for, yes. you have empathy for. Even the position, some of you know that you put yourself in a bad position with God and with man around you. God is the rescuer. He's the deliverer. And he doesn't just deliver you from those situations. He delivers you into his heart and his promise. So I pray that you would have faith for God to come into your life in a new way right now. And we just pray that my encounter that through this book would be your encounter, even if you never read it. I pray that you would have encounters with God that would cause a great maturing so you really look like Jesus. Amen. Amen. That was so good. Yes. We are out of time, but I just want you to remember that God purposed for you to be living during this time and season. John Paul used to say that to us all the time. He's like, God has blessed us and he's trusting us that we would be born in this season of time in all of creation. And uh, I know that we want to be found faithful. Mm -hmm. I want you to know he has incredible plans for you. You have a role to play in this upcoming revival. I want you to stay close to his heart. And I want you to know that he will continue to guide you down the path he has for you. And all you have to do is my grandfather cried out to the Lord when he was 19 years old. And he said, God, if you're there, I need you. He didn't know what kind of proper prayer to pray. He did it on a Monday morning at a, at a uh, tool and die mill in Greenville, South Carolina. He knelt down and God changed his life. And he can do that for you. Yes. My grandfather had an encounter that changed the rest of our family. If you're watching today and you need prayer again, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have amazing prayer partners that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week and we would love to pray with you it's our honor to do so if you get a voicemail leave your name and number i promise you a real person will call you back you can go to daystar.com click on prayer send your prayer request in we pray over all the prayer requests that come in from around the world well i want to thank sean bolts for joining us at the table today be sure to thank pick you, up a copy of his new book encounter a spiritual perspective we just barely scratched the surface of all the prophetic visions and insight that are in it. For more on Sean and his ministry, you can visit him online at boltsministries.com. Also remember to join the conversation by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk has touched your life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Sean. You promised to come back and be with the ladies at the table. Always. Okay. Always all right. Yes. All right. And greet your beautiful <laughs> wife and kids for us. Yes. We love you. We'll see you next time. Be encouraged. The best is yet to come. Amen. Yeah.